Hello everyone and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I wanted to talk about a few alternative art projects, uh, photography projects that I'm working on and experimenting with. The first is this, I'm using Arista Ortholith film, uh, 4x5 film, in a 1950s press camera, the Graflex Crown. I'm using this film for a few reasons, mainly because it's like super cheap and it's letting me figure out the, um, the process of using that camera as opposed to wasting more expensive uh, film. It also has some very unique properties that I'm exploring and I'll talk about later on in it. But the ortho, I believe that means that it is not sensitive to red light. Film at this point is panchromatic, which I think means covers the entire spectrum but ortho isn't red light sensitive. Um, and I believe prior to the 1900s, a lot of film or emulsions were ortho. Lith, I believe is the lithography process, which I'm not familiar with, I've never done it, but I think it's a dark room process where you're enlarging your film, uh, creating a negative from it, or using it to then create a positive um, negative and back and forth and doing some sort of contrasty printing process. Not quite sure. I'm using it in the camera though. Then, just to step away from that film for a moment, this is my first cyanotype contact print that I got using that film. So what I did was I took my Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press. I coated it with my um, a mixture of arrowroot starch and boiling water. This was a sizing so that whenever I later coated it with my cyanotype chemicals, it would sit more on the surface of the paper as opposed to being absorbed in. And that, I believe, helped prevent uh, brush mark damage when applying the chemicals. And it also helped get the brightest whites possible. So after I had done that and let the paper dry for a day, I then mixed my cyanotype chemicals, uh, A and B formula, and I let that just sit in the closet for a few days before I had a chance to really play with it. Then last night I put my film on top. I'm not sure if this is the exact one. I did multiple shots of this sandwiched it between glass and exposed it to a UV light, a light box that I made for about 15 minutes. Then I took the paper and put it in a slightly acidic bath. I splashed a little bit of vinegar into a, just a bath of tap water for a few minutes and then rinsed it out. And I'm very happy with the results. Like I said earlier, I believe ortho orthochromatic, um, the not red light sensitivity was what was happening in the 1800s. And then eventually panchromatic took place, the full spectrum. So having that orthochromatic, the old timing, plus the cyanotype, which was invented or discovered in 1848, I believe, having those two aspects from the 1800s just really resonated a lot with me and I'm really excited about this especially since this is 1869 when this uh, cemetery took place so really really excited very pleased with it you could see the contrast that took place um, and let me go back to the film so I shot these out of the Graflex and I tried to process it as if it was a yeah, regular film but in order to do that I had to do a very weak very diluted mixture of um, my developer I used a mixture of one part of my developer to 200 I let it develop for 18 minutes with very, very gentle swirling of my Patterson tank every three minutes. I'd use what's called the taco method where you roll up the film and put a hair tie around it. 
and let, that lets you sand it up around the center column in the developing tank. Um, I may reduce the time on that because I am still getting quite a bit of contrast, but I am getting some good results. I'm, I'm excited with what's taking place so far. By the way, that formula came from um, a blog post that I saw a, somebody named Conspiracy of Cartographers. That blog ended, it seems like two years ago, I think the most recent post, or three years ago, maybe 2019, 2018. So just trying to find a way to contact that person to see if they're still experimenting with this film. They had some really um, beautiful prints that they were making on uh, black and white RC paper. Okay, so the second thing with this film is that I want to experiment with a essentially a fake ambro type type of um, display. Ambro type, from what I understand, is a uh, underexposed glass negative where it is then presented on top of a black or dark background where it then appears to be a positive image. Meaning, I'm gonna take one that came out super contrasty. You can see how clear all this spot is right here and how dense this one is. The background, the dark background will come through that and make it appear dark. And then this will give the effect of the highlights. So if we place it over a black background and put some glass on top. That's what we have. I believe that was lamp black watercolor. And this was speedball black ink. I also wanted to display it over a black mat, which I have right here to see how that would work. And I also have a little bit of cheap black fabric. Now, I'm not sure how it's showing up on the screen because every time I stand up, I keep on getting my ref reflection in the screen. I'm trying to stay out of the reflection of the glass. So demonstrating or displaying this, there's a few concerns that I'm still trying to hash out. One being the emulsion side. The emulsion side for this fella is the side facing up. But in order to have the correct view, so here's the emulsion side, since it's in a camera and the image is reversed, I would have to display it emulsion side down. But then my emulsion side is gonna be in contact with either my fabric, my paint, or my mat. So I'm debating, do I find a way to float the image essentially over the black background? But here's for you all to kind of get a look on the different backgrounds. Let me know what you think below looks the best. If it's the, um, the mat, the fabric, or the painted pigments. I'm just going to go through a few of these just using the fabric and the mat and just ramble a little bit. And then we'll look at these as we do that. This is emulsion side up. So here would be the correct way for the image over that dark background. This one just came out way too much contrast. Let's move on to another. This one, way too much contrast. I believe, actually, I had done this shot twice, but I didn't take the best notes. One of them is double the exposure. It was about a 15 second um, 
30 second exposure and I was playing with what's called, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing it right, the re reciprocity. When you expose chemicals, after you get to a, the one or two second mark, they start losing their um, processing ability or they don't um, process as quickly. So you have to account for that by adding more time. There's no data or information given in regards to this film, what the, the, uh, that effect is, what factor you would use, but um, kind of just playing around with it. Then a lot of these, I started just doing at a large aperture. I think I might've been at this point playing with f8 or i think my camera goes to um f 4.7 which lets a lot of light in and um, i was experimenting with depth of fields where with the larger apertures larger openings you can focus on an object and then there's a range in front of it and behind that object which will diffuse it's um, depth of field Hopefully that was an okay explanation of depth of field or just um, just enough necessary for you all to understand what I'm saying. I do have some more shots after this one, but this is the last shot that I did take. I was playing around with how um, the, the writing from a tombstone or a sign or anything would show up on this type of film because of that contrast. This one did not achieve it. I believe we might say that this one was, well, if I hold it up to the light, I can see the writing there, but it's not showing through on this black. I was also thinking, contemplating getting the Blackest Black 3.0. It's an acrylic paint. It's about 20 something dollars, but um, it's super matte black. And I believe that might give it, I don't know if that'll give a better effect or not then comparing this black mat versus the fabric, we do have a difference in black. And that might give you all an idea. If you experimented with the blackest black, let me know. I think we have the pinkest pink in our uh, art supply collection. I think this shot is where I absolutely became amazed by the camera where focusing on the view screen, where you look on the back and you have the light shining onto the screen is creating the opposite upside down image. And I had the aperture open really wide and just how these details really popped up on that screen alone versus the background. It was just such a beautiful optical phenomenon that I really was excited to see. After this one, I have one more to show y'all. I was playing a little bit with composition wise, but I believe this was another one where I was looking to see if I can get any of the, the finer details of the writing on the, the tombstones to show up. I'm thinking the black fabric might be the better way to go. But then, like I said, this is emulsion side facing the fabric and I'm not sure how safe that is. I did contact the company that produces this and look around online. Films seem to be on a few different types of bases. I think they originally used uh, a nitrate type base, which was flammable, so they don't use that anymore. Then they started producing, I think, a safety film, which is was an acetate. But I was reading that the acetate 
can suffer from something called a vinegar syndrome. Not quite sure what that is. And then polyester film is apparently the way to go, the one that will be the most, have the most longevity. I think averages calculated at 500 years if display, if um, preserved properly. Where it would be controlled humidity, it would be um, controlled exposure to light, etc. Um, so this is on that, that polyester film. So I think displaying it, the film in it itself is a good choice. It's just now figuring out the emulsion and what it's in contact with. I think I have, yes I do. I have a black mat down here. We can see how that looks with the black mat because the glass wouldn't be pressing against it in that case. It'll press against a little bit here, but if it was adhered to a background or if there are spacers, it might look something like that. Maybe it's a little too low for the uh, the camera. I have it zoomed in. I could just turn it sideways just so you could see a little bit there. So that's where I'm at with this experiment. Um, I'm happy with the cyanotype prints that I'm able to get from it. So far, I'm getting decent results with the ortholith film. Um, I don't know if I had mentioned one of the things was the price wise, it's about $17 for 50 sheets, which compared to the next level of four by five film, which is the, might be the Arista or the Fomapan 400, 100. Um, that's about $54 for 50 sheets. So this is, I believe about we could just round this to about a third the price of a sheet of the cheapest regular panchromatic film. But then again, you do have to experiment and see what works. And it is fickle, so you are spending money in that regard. But you can't display the panchromatic film in this fashion. So, I hope you enjoyed. I know this was kind of just um, talking theory, thoughts, and ideas. Uh, let me know what you think down below. Um, if you think this fabric would be the better backing, or if I should go with a um, the mat, or even try to get the blackest black, which would be super dark, not reflective. Um, but it might make it look really cool. On that note, I hope you all have a great day. And I'll be back with more art and art experiments. Y'all take care. Bye.